Hi everyone, in this quick overview video, we are going to compare and contrast two popular Hadoop file formats, that's Parquet and Avro. Specifically in this video, we'll take a look at a quick overview of these two file formats if you're not familiar with them. We'll take a look at where these file formats are similar in nature. And more importantly, we'll spend the bulk of um, this video covering uh, scenarios or parameters where you will want to um, uh, to address whether you want to consider Parquet or if you want to consider Avro. Uh, and then finally, we'll take a look at some general guidelines when you're comparing these uh, file formats and uh, even scenarios where you might want to consider using both file formats. Uh, so first off, uh, as I pointed out, um, what exactly are these two formats? Um, yeah, it's given that these are two very popular file formats uh, in the Hadoop world. Uh, however, uh, when you look at it under the hood, uh, there's some very uh, stark differences between these two file formats. Uh, so to begin with, Avro is uh, what's uh, referred to as a row-based storage format as compared to Parquet, which is a column-based storage format. So off the bat, you have two very different ways of serializing data. Uh, we'll get into uh, the uh, the benefits and pros and cons of each of these, but um, uh, the very first thing is uh, looking at where they're quite similar in nature. Uh, so effectively, both these are two file formats which are highly optimized uh, from a Hadoop uh, uh, kind of like a, a environment standpoint. Uh, again, it's I say highly optimized uh, as opposed to something like storing it in plain text uh, because uh, um, both these two file formats, Parquet and Avro, uh, they're both what's uh, referred to as self-describing formats. Uh, in a sense, they have information, metadata and schema that you can, uh, that's embedded in the file. So it's very much a self-describing format. Uh, it's high performant also in part because it uses compression. Uh, so uh, uh, compression as opposed to uh, file formats like plain text. Now, if you've compressed the data, that's uh, beneficial from two factors. One is uh, from a storage standpoint, uh, you can get significant savings, again, depending on the cardinality of the data and um, the, the overall size of the data, you can get uh, good savings, a magnitude of savings from a storage standpoint. So cost of storage, has, you can reduce that. Uh, and also importantly, it's about compute resources. Uh, so when you have data that's compressed, uh, retrieving that data takes less uh, resources than if the data was uncompressed. So you'll find operations are much more cost effective and faster, both computational as well as storage, uh, kind of like operations are a lot faster when there's compression involved. So again, both these two file formats uses um, different approaches to compression. That's as far as uh, similarities go, uh, but uh, moving on to uh, some of the key areas uh, when you're considering and comparing Parquet versus Avro, while there are many parameters or pillars that you could uh, consider, I've broken it down into three sections. Um, so the first one is in terms of uh, the kind of characteristics. Um, so when you're looking at um, different file formats and serialization, they have different performance characteristics uh, when it comes to read operations versus write operations. Now, Parquet, to begin with, is a file format that's really geared towards analytical querying. So what that means in a nutshell is Parquet is really suitable when you have a kind of environment where you, you do things like write once and read many. So which tends to be vast majority of analytical kind of like use cases. So if you're a, a data analyst or data scientist, for example, you are, you are going to query the data and uh, perform lots of query operations on a subset of the data. So that's more read intensive, right? You're not necessarily creating a lot of data, new data. So Parquet is ideally suited for that kind of workload where you're doing a lot of querying or read operations. And you'll find that Parquet, uh, if you did benchmark it against Avro, you'll find that Avro, ten, it, it tends to perform um, inferior when it comes to write operations. Uh, also in part because Parquet as a format, as I just pointed out, it's really geared towards read operations. So it's really fast on the read side, but uh, a magnitude slower on the write side. Uh, also because uh, when writing the data, the kind of like compressions that you get with Parquet in vast majority of the cases are much more uh, better than using Avro, so hence it uh, takes a long time for the data to 
right? I say a long time. Again, this is purely comparing Parquet with Avro. Uh, on the other side, when you look at Avro, um, uh, where Avro is really good as compared to Parquet is from a write standpoint. Um, so write operations in Avro are magnitude of times faster than Parquet, but uh, again, Avro, you'll find that uh, using the same set of tools, if you were to query data from Parquet and query data from Avro, uh, queries from Avro would be slower. So again, it's really optimized for write operations and doesn't do all that well uh, when it comes to reading data uh, when comparing with Parquet. Uh, while that in itself might not be the only characteristic that you want to make your decision based off of, uh, it's important to consider the next element, which is really about the tooling space uh, that you have. So I pointed out that earlier that Park is really meant for your analytical kind of like query users. Um, however, uh, specifically when I talk about querying and tooling, uh, it depends on what kind of uh, uh, tools the business users, uh, the data science users, the data analysts are using. Um, so in particular, if you're using tools like say Impala, for example, uh, which is uh, uh, an MPP engine uh, provided by Cloudera, but again, it's available in other distribution uh, not just the Cloudera distribution of Hadoop, uh, you'll find that um, keeping data in Parquet is highly recommended when you're using certain tools. Uh, so again, Impala is an MPP engine, again, uh, really intended for interactive querying, analytical querying. So Parquet is an ideal format. So again, if you uh, have a tool set in mind for your end users slash business users, um, then uh, the kind of serialization format can be dictated by, by the tool set of choice. Um, also on that note, uh, it's interesting to note that um, uh, from a timeline perspective, uh, Avro has been around a lot longer than Parquet. Parquet is uh, relatively new in the market. Uh, it was uh, first released in 2013. Um, it was a joint initiative between Twitter and Cloudera, uh, which also tells you that uh, the strongest backer for Parquet is uh, the Cloudera. Uh, I'm sorry, it's Cloudera, and of course, uh, it's a highly recommended uh, serialization format within Cloudera. But if you were looking at uh, a different uh, distributor of Hadoop, like say Hortonworks, they might prefer something like ORC format as opposed to Parquet. So again, there's a, that's a completely different conversation, but just highlighting that depending on the tool sets that you're using and depending on the distribution of Hadoop, um, your mileage or your, um, your the parameters that you select might be more uh, complex than just uh, Parquet and Avro. And then finally, the last parameter of consideration is um, about the schema uh, or schema evolution specifically. So as one would imagine, if you had data in a particular structure in a particular schema, it's not going to stay that way forever or for long. It's invariably going to evolve and it's invariably going to change. So Avro and Parquet both support this idea of schema evolution, but both support it to different degrees. Uh, Parquet, uh, in basically put, is uh, is uh, given the level of maturity in the in the Parquet. Well, uh, it's it's not as mature as Avro. Doesn't fully support the wealth of capabilities that Avro supports. So this is a case where Avro really stands out. Um, Parquet only supports schema evolution in the form of append. So if you add columns, you can always uh, evolve those columns in Parquet. So if an existing column has been modified or you want to modify an existing column, Parquet at this point in time in the current version, it does not support um, changes to existing columns. It only supports columns that you can append to. Whereas Avro supports a much richer and more featured schema evolution. So whether you are appending columns or you're modifying columns, Avro supports um, the full wealth of uh, schema evolution. So that's uh, an area where Avro clearly shines. Finally, coming to a general guidelines, um, there's not a whole lot to cover again, given um, in terms of guidelines over and above what I've just covered. So in general, if you're looking at a workload, which is uh, really intended for analytical queries, uh, you definitely want to consider Parquet. Um, and uh, nine out of 10 cases, Parquet seems to be a more ideal choice. Um, 
However, uh, the specific two areas where uh, Avro is uh, really good is uh, when you're looking at ETL kind of like workloads. So the one single thing, even before I, I get to um, the summary is, uh, if you're looking at Parquet versus Avro, I guess uh, one of the key considerations are how many columns are you going to query uh, when reading the data? So in many analytical queries, uh, it's a case where you could imagine it's like select maybe A, B, C group by uh, you know a set of columns, right? So we are not scanning through the entire list of columns. Like let's say uh, you have uh, 30, 40 columns in a table uh, and you're only querying maybe five columns from these and doing a filter or a group by operations on a couple of these. So that's uh, only a representative of a small subset of columns in the overall table. If that's the kind of queries that you're running, Parquet is ideal because uh, if you have fewer columns on a wide table, Parquet really, really shines. However, Avro is really uh, a suitable format when you're looking at queries that are scanning the entire table. Like if you have queries that are basically selecting uh, or doing things like a select star, uh, not ideal, but think of it this way. If it's something equivalent to a select star or if it's querying um, pretty much all the columns in the table, typical of many ETL-like operations. So it's not necessarily end user queries. It might be an ETL tool that's processing the data. Then Avro is a good format to keep uh, in consideration. And then finally, um, in, in terms of um, vast majority of cases, uh, you might choose one or the other, but there are some cases where you might decide to keep both file formats. So I'll give you an example. Again, it's, uh, it's very common in data lake kind of like projects or environments where you don't necessarily know in advance what the downstream applications are or the applications that are going to consume the data uh, from your Hadoop cluster. So it makes sense uh, in some circumstances to kind of like duplicate the data in both Avro as well as Parquet. And also if you keep in mind things like schema evolution, it's quite common uh, these days to find that the primary, um, the format that uh, a data lake might keep is Avro because we don't know in advance uh, what uh, the downstream consumers are or for that matter what particular columns they might use for querying etc so uh, it's it's common again to keep data in both avro as well as parquet format and uh, yet again another format is um, parquet uh, might be created kind of like on demand based on the kind of like query engine that you're using so since the data is in avro format you might uh, want and because of which it's also self-describing, you also have schema information, you can always convert one format to the other. So again, it depends on your particular scenarios, but uh, it's uh, just important to highlight that in some circumstances, it's not necessary one or the other. It could be a case where you keep data in both file formats and uh, you try and optimize uh, one particular file format or the other. So that's a quick summary of this uh, video covering Parquet versus Avro. Thanks again for watching.